For months, we've had experts weigh in on what the New York Jets should do with the number 10 overall pick, and quite frankly, for the rest of their picks in the 2024 NFL Draft. But now the power turns to us, and we will do a live mock draft to kick off the month of April. We're in draft month, baby. Exactly what the New York Jets will do, including trades, with your comments throughout the entire thing. Let's roll, baby. Joint. It is unequivocally the Super Bowl for New York Jet fans. Field Gates, baby. Field Gas Guardians. Let's bring him on the show. Come on, people. Connor Rogers is on the show. What's up, Connor? But Trevor Gas Guard Sikama, baby. For me, personally, my favorite New York Jet of all time. Wow, it's great to be on. What an intro that was right there. Paul, you, nobody does an intro like you. Paul, you, you give the best intro of literally any podcast that I'm, I've, I've ever seen. I'm going to lose my gas darn bananas. Good morning, everybody, and happy April. Happy April 1st, I suppose. April Fool's Day, but not for the Jets, as I see in the comments already. My name is Paul Austin Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com. Welcome to Boy Green Daily, a daily New York Jets video program available every morning live at 730 plus, wherever you find your podcast shortly after the program. Now, normally every Monday over the last couple of months, we've been joined by Tom C., but he's on a well-deserved vacation, some R&R. And we did have another draft analyst that was scheduled to join us, but he had some family issues. So that's all right. Now the power shifts to me, baby, because we're going to be doing a live seven-round mock draft here on the program. Plus, we'll factor in your comments into each selection and uh, go through all the picks as they are. We'll be using PFF's mock draft simulator. And I'll say this off the top. I think that Joe Douglas has had a badass offseason. He's accomplished a lot of things on the bucket list. A brand new starting five, throw in Mike Williams, trade for Hassan Reddick. Uh, you know, it's been it's been great. There's just no other way to put it. It's been really great so far. But there's a chance for Joe Douglas uh, to have a, a, another level to this draft. For me, and I've been kind of describing it this way, the final infinity stone to the perfect offseason for the New York Jets. Without further ado, let's get right into it, everybody. Like I said, feel free to get your comments rolling. I'll try to uh, be tuning into them as we get through the program. So let's get to the PFF Live Mock Draft Simulator. Let's put that on the screen for everybody watching visually. I'll also be describing everything that's happening for our audio-only listeners. Here we are. It is a seven-round mock draft. We're selecting the New York Jets. I'm going to slow down the speed because this mock draft is going to include trades. So we'll keep those in mind at other spots during the draft. So we have the Jets. We have seven rounds. The PFF mock draft simulator. Let's get this party started. We'll enter the draft. And I'm going to start the draft. Okay, we got Caleb first, Drake May second, Jaden Daniels three, Marvin Harrison four, Malik Nevers five, J.J. McCarthy six. Now I'm going to pause the draft right there. We're now at the eighth overall pick, and I'll recap the picks that have already happened, okay? Caleb Williams went number one overall, Drake May number two, Jaden Daniels number three, and then you had back-to-back wide receivers and Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, J.J. McCarthy to the Giants, and Joe Alt to the Titans. I've paused the draft because I think this is a very likely scenario how this plays out, which means there's one receiver left, and that is Roma Dunze of the Big Three. Now, personally, I would prefer both Marvin Harrison and probably Malik, uh, Malik Neighbors, to be honest, but Roma Dunze is really good, too. And for me... If the draft plays out this way with uh, Adunze in this case or either of the other two available for the Falcons, I'm making a call to leapfrog the Bears and I'm investigating the price because I believe that my big board for the New York Jets in this draft is five players deep in the first round. It is the three big wide receivers. It is Joe Alt and it is Brock Bowers. Now, of course, we could wait and the Brock Bowers is going to be on the board 10 times out of 10 when we're here at 10, but I think it's time to trade up people in the first round. And plus I get to make the decisions this time. So I'm going to investigate what it will cost to the Atlanta Falcons to move up. Then you secure in this case, Roma Dunze and make, uh, you know, pay the price. 
that is uh, here. So the Jets don't have a second round pick. It's only two picks up. So I want their eighth overall pick because, again, I want to move up for Roma Dudes. I want to make a big boss move. Now, 72 uh, would work. It would certainly work. I think what I will do here, hmm, we'll have to do a combination of picks probably uh, to because I'm going to have to assume that a lot of people would want to move up for this final receiver. Plus, we're sniping the Bears who would love to pair Roma Dunze with Caleb Williams. I'm certain of it. All right, let's see what we're going to do here. I'm going to go with, uh, we'll pick 134. Um, uh, well, obviously, we need pick 10, and then uh, this is a 93% chance to get accepted, their later fourth round pick. But uh, why don't we do this? We'll do uh, the, hmm. All right, uh, let me also go to the chat. What are we talking about here? Yep, yep, yep. I know a lot of people want the offensive tackle, but. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to move up for the playmaker. I'm going to move up for the pass catcher, baby. And, uh, yeah, I will sacrifice. So I will go uh, 134 for the Jets. I will give up that pick and also give up. This is probably aggressive, but I will give up a third next year. And I will, I will offer this trade. And it went through. We have the eighth overall pick. I'm selecting wide receiver Roma Dunze. Here's the thing, folks. Uh, and why I'm being so aggressive here. Uh, Garrett Wilson's awesome. Mike Williams is awesome when healthy. But I'm going to be honest, I was pretty jarred by what Robert Sala said uh, at the uh, NFL annual meeting where he said that Mike Williams has a long way to go. And maybe it's just coach talk. But uh, I'm just telling you that it seems it, that just scared me now because if, if Mike Williams, who isn't going to be ready for training camp, has any chance to not be ready for the season, then we have Garrett Wilson, Xavier Gibson, Alan Lazard. There's just not enough there. So I have to be aggressive, and I want to be aggressive, and I'm moving up uh, for Roma Dunze, the wide receiver out of Washington. So that's exactly who I'm drafting here. Um, I will pause the draft real quick just to see what people are saying here. Up and not back. That's correct. Yeah, I think there are a lot of ways to go about this, Kareem, as we're in the middle of this mock draft scenario. And with the Jets having filled most of their main needs, you could say one of two things. One, trade back, get more lottery tickets, and fill out depth. That is a reasonable way to think about this. But for me, I'm being aggressive. It's all in, and you can go get one of those dominant wide receivers. And again, you, we can all argue who that is, whether it's a Dunze, Neighbors, or Harrison Jr. I believe it's any of those three, which would be me uh, moving up. The only offensive alignment I'd be willing to move up for is Joe Alt, but he is already selected here at Tennessee 7. And we could go earlier to guarantee a Harrison Jr. or Neighbors, but obviously the higher you go, the higher the price is. So I think a reasonable jump is 8. It's a reasonable jump. Maybe a little picks this year, maybe a little picks next year, and you don't have to go too crazy. It's a two jump. That's fine. That's not too crazy. So, again, you could argue either way. I'll, I'll try to explain my thought process here on all the picks, but I just want to explain that was kind of my thought process uh, there for that. We will resume the draft. Now, a lot of people have asked, Paul, can the Jets move back into the second round? And really, I think the only way legitimately that the Jets can move back into the second round is if the New York Jets – um, are able to trade back from the first round. If they trade back from 10, they go to 15, 16, 17, 18. It doesn't even matter. I know that if you drop to the seven or eight spots, potentially, you could pick up a second, and, and then you'd have your second there. But I think another way to potentially do it is have this kind of mini quarterback rush if somehow one of the quarterbacks are available. You're at 10. You could go to 11, 12, 13, 14, somewhere there, pick up the extra third, and then you can use the two thirds to jump back into the second round. If you are hell bent on that, I think that is another opportunity uh, for the Jets to get into the second round. So that could be possible among the things available uh, potentially uh, to do. And GV Invest uh, mentions uh, Brock Bowers. Again, I would be thrilled. I know a lot of people would be angry. I'd be thrilled if somehow the Jets ended up with Brock Bowers. So that's not a bad play if you want to sit there or potentially uh, even trade back. All right, let's look at uh, who's on the board here. So we're now at pick 72 in the third round with the eighth overall pick after trading up. Uh, we offered uh, our later fourth round pick. That's 134. 
that uh, we swapped with Baltimore in a future 2025 selection. I gave them a third. So a fourth and a third to move up to eight to secure Roma Dunze. So we still have our third in this year's class because I think it's really important to keep adding pieces to the puzzle. Now, why don't we do this? Let's look at the positions. I think the first thing we got to look at is offensive tackle. Um, I also think the Jets are going to add a veteran swing tackle. And somehow, I don't know if this happens on draft day, Patrick Paul is still here. You have Blake Fisher here. We want to try to make it as realistic as possible as well. But I think offensive tackle um, is certainly on the board there. Now, Snowball says, uh, I thought we were giving up number 10 for uh, Devontae Adams. I'm going to be honest. I would not be willing to give up the 10th overall pick uh, for Devontae Adams. I would not be. I want Devontae. And if that happens ahead of the trade deadline, as opposed to doing this move, that's fine. The other thing I will say is after the Tyree Kill trade, we ended up with Garrett Wilson. So sometimes everything works out. So uh, let's see. Uh, so this is uh, this is an idea to use. And by the way, if uh, old uh, Joe Douglas gets uh, this wide receiver, Roma Dunze, this is the reaction. It's a final infinity stone, baby. That's exactly it. And I forgot to do this as well for, you know, the eighth overall pick, the Jet Select. What is your Roma Dunze out of Washington? <laughs> Get some production value on this show, for God's sakes. But uh, very nice there. So uh, pick 72. All right. So uh, let's see here. So I don't think, again, as much as I would love uh, Patrick Paul here, I don't think that guy's going to be available at 72. So let's try to keep some realism here and look at these other offensive tackles. Yeah, boy, it drops off real quick, which is something that we've been warned about in the past uh, with this situation. Let's uh, let's check out uh, let's check out guard. Let's uh, let's go there. Let's go to interior offensive line. That's another place to look potentially for the New York Jets. All right, who do we got here? Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh boy. Mm hmm. Well, you know what? Let's do it. Uh, I'm thinking here of adding offensive linemen, and the tackles obviously run out a lot faster uh, than the guards. There's no question about it. But another place I would uh, like to go here, I'm seeing some of you other guys have some other options. I'm going to go Cooper BB, baby. I'm just going to run this pick up, get a really good offensive lineman, and just add more to the puzzle. So uh, with the 72nd overall pick, Cooper BB, guard out of Kansas State, uh, let's just say this confidently, you are a New York Jet. And again, Elijah Rivera Tucker is uh, kicking over to uh, right guard uh, fully for the New York Jets, which is awesome. But you know what? You need as many bodies there as possible. And I want to maximize value. There's probably going to be better guards available than tackles. Maybe they get lucky and somebody starts to slip uh, to that selection. If so, I'm all aboard. So right now we've gotten a wide receiver. We've gotten an offensive lineman so far for the New York Jets. That's uh, that's where I'm rocking here. Yeah, I know. I know John Sauer is, is totally angry. There goes your season. Uh, he is not happy with the no offensive tackle uh, thing. And uh, I, I get some love on the Cooper BB pick. Thank you very much. I, I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. But uh, let's go here. Now we're at the fourth round selection. Remember, we traded the other fourth rounder. That's 134 in that Roma Dunze trade up. So we still have 111 here on the board. Uh, fans, go ahead and tell me. What, uh, okay, Phil likes what I'm cooking. I like it. Okay. In case Simpson doesn't hold. Uh, booyah. Exactamundo. And anything can happen. Like he was rock solid. He played in all 19 games last season for the Baltimore Ravens. But and uh, I want to bring in a vet uh, guy like Connor McGovern so he can back up center. But if if I don't like the tackle value, then I'm going guard, baby. Uh, so that's what I like. So, yeah, Garrett Wilson, Roma Dunce, Mike Williams. Come on, baby. That is great. We're hearing Bordellini picks. Okay, I'm willing to go back to the offensive line. So, guys, uh, let us know. Let us know what positions we should be looking at here. All right, let me look around a little. Okay. Let's look around. I'm all for going back. Let's see offensive tackles. Who's here? Because now there's going to be a big gap. We have to keep that in mind, that this 111 pick, um, excuse me, is going to be our last pick for a long time. We don't have a fifth-round pick. We traded our other fourth. So there's about to be a big gap at times. So we got to keep that in mind here. Um, yeah, we got to keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Paul at 72. He's outstanding. I'm glad you like that Jet Orange, baby. That's what I think for BB. Yeah, and I know he's a guard, not a tackle, but uh, plug him in inside. I think the better value, again, at this stage is there. So, okay, let's look at offensive tackles. All right. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I don't love what I'm seeing here. I don't love what I'm seeing here. But, again, we're going to have a big gap. I think we'll get a, a, a swing tackle. All right, let's see. Who else is on the board here? Let's see. Um Again, let's keep a uh, – let me just take a peek at corners. we just got to keep an eye because of the potential of the DJ Reed, Michael Carter, the second situation. So I just want to take a peek there at corner. But uh, a safety, of course, is on the board potentially for the New York Jets. An interior defensive line is potentially on the board. Got to keep that in mind, of course, as well. Hmm. I know there's a there's a lot of option to consider. I'm keep checking back with the chat. What do we think? Uh, Paul check running back. Okay, let's look at running back. Okay. Uh, oop, uh, okay, got running back Marshawn Lloyd out of USC. Tyrone Tracy, Purdue. The esteemed kid out of Notre Dame, Braylon Allen. Will Shipley, who I love here from ACC territory. Dylan Johnson. There's a lot of names. Frank Orr Jr. Hey -o. But I'm going to be honest, I'm not in love with taking – I'd prefer a vet running back, to be honest with you, Phil, uh, as we're uh, checking some of these. Hmm. Kareem says, I don't think Christian Jones would be here, but he's solid. All right, I like that. Uh, I like that. Yeah, no, I'm in no rush to take Frank Gore uh, here, here at all. I'm absolutely in no rush. We're a trade partner for Zach. Uh, Arizona gave us his seventh. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right, let's see. Let's keep it rolling here. Um, all right, so we're going to go away from running back here. We're going to go away from running back. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go to offensive tackle. Let's go to offensive tackle here. All right, so people don't believe Christian Jones will be here, it sounds like. It does not say. Christian Jones or Brendan Rice from Kareem. All right, you know what? Uh, let's go Christian Jones. We'll take the offensive tackle out of Texas. Uh, he will be our pick here. Yep, you know what? We got to roll with what we got. So Christian Jones, the offensive tackle out of Texas, you are the number 111th pick in the fourth round. All right, there we go. So let's uh, make that selection official, Christian Jones. So there you go. Where's John Sauer? Hey, what do you think? We got you. We got you. Your offensive tackle. It took a little while. Hmm. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, the who, where there are so many wide receivers you can get in the third tackle should be first round. But those wide receivers aren't Marvin Harrison Jr., Roma Dunes, or Malik Neighbors. I want the top 1%. I want to swing for the fences. I want the best possible guy. Sure, there are capable guys in the third round. Also, have you seen the Jets' mid-round history of wide receiver selections? Not good. We just did the Idzik show yesterday. They took Jalen Saunders, fourth round, lasted a year. Shaq Evans, he was on the team, and then he was like in the AFL, CFL. No disrespect to those leagues, but I mean, for Pete's sake, uh, they have not had a great history with mid-round wide receiver selection. I'm not saying you should avoid that for that reason, uh, for that, but like for Pete's sake, like uh, let's let's go, let's get aggressive here. Uh, let's see, is Luke McCaffrey available? We took a great backup tackle. Yeah, people are angry. People do not like it. They do not like all the picks. That's okay. You can't please everyone. I understand that. That's all right. Let's keep going here. All right, now we're at a pick 185 here. We're here in the sixth round, and then remember we have a couple of seventh rounders at the end of this draft. So, okay. So we've addressed a lot of offense so far, which, by the way, I think is how it should work. We should invest a ton of resources uh, there. Let me just take a peek at quarterback. Let me take a peek at who are the quarterbacks available. Now, well, there's uh, there's been a drop off. There's no question. All right, we'll reinvestigate this later. There's really no one that stands out to me at this point. Let's uh, we'll come back to that later. Okay, let me see what else is on the board here. Okay, you could always go for another wide receiver. That's possible. Who the hell's on the board here? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, a couple of names, a couple of names here, but uh, we'll stay away. Maybe it's time to finally dip our toe on the defensive side of the ball. Remember, the Jets still need uh, a safety. 
They still need a safety to uh, investigate here. I'll also check the chat here. What's everyone saying? Uh, what would have cost us to move up for Neighbors or Harrison? Yeah, I was looking into some of that uh, before the show to see what it could have uh, what could have been there, uh, but it was it was costing basically your next year's first to make the jump from ten to four um, because the Jets don't have a second. So yeah, it would have cost them their first rounder next year, which is for Marvin Harrison Jr. I, I'm probably willing to do it, but I just want to try to maximize the juice. I like the three. Harrison Jr. is number one, and I prefer that move up if it's possible. I believe it's going to be four quarterbacks off the board. I think it's going to be one, two, three, four Arizona trades back, which means all of a sudden now we get to five, and there's the wide receiver pick, which the Jets could go up potentially with the Chargers. They're looking potentially to trade back. You could go over there. Yeah, the, the rest of the draft is uh, uninspiring. There's no question about it. At a variety of these uh, positions uh, for the New York Jets, so – Let's kind of look around here and see what we can do as we're here on day three. We've got three picks left uh, for the New York Jets. And again, the uh, trouble areas, uh, safety, that's something uh, you'd like to move on. Uh, safety for sure is something potentially. And interior defensive line, let's take a quick peek down that road uh, for the Jets. Let's go here. Let's go defensive, interior defensive line. Okay. Hmm. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, you're right. They're uh, the uh, the picking is sl getting slimmer here at this point. All right, let's go. Hmm. Let's also double check offensive line. I wouldn't mind double or triple dipping there. Hmm. Nothing really of interest there at offensive tackle. Let's double check guard here before we make any final selections. Also, keep your questions, comments, or thoughts coming here. I always uh, check it. And what was the general sense of the chat that Bordellini would be here or wouldn't be here this late? I, I think I remember Dom C saying he did not think he would be, which uh, I've heard some criticism in the past, some criticism in the past on Bordellini. Shout out to the 400 plus people in this room. Quick shout out the 100 plus on YouTube. Make sure you guys like the video. Hit subscribe, baby, uh, for more juicy content, plus a 300 on Twitter. We appreciate you guys as well. And also heavy on Jets for supporting the show as well. Keep that coming. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people on the Bordellini thing, so we'll stay away from offensive line, even though I have no problem going in that direction. Uh, let's go to safety. I'm just going to pick uh, one of the best guys on the board here. The Jets need to go in this direction. I think uh, that's the best way to do it. Let's go, well, the Aladipo kid. Uh, we've heard that before from uh, old buddy Dom C. All right, why don't we go, hmm. Let's see. We could go with one of the safeties here. Let's go. Yeah, you know what? We're just going to go with Omar Brown, the safety out of Nebraska. And uh, we'll play the clip for you guys. Omar Brown, safety out of Nebraska. You are a New York Jet with a number 185th overall pick in this mock draft. <laughs> All right, there we go. We got that in. Now we got two seventh rounders to finish this puppy off. The final two picks in the 2024 NFL draft. I love it. Um, isn't that funny? Uh, so we go to this comment as we're waiting to get to the seventh round. The Freedom House, 1984. What's crazy to me is last year we took a backup with our first rounder, and everybody talks crap about it. But this year, if we don't take a backup with our first rounder, the whole draft is a waste. Yeah, I know. John Sauer is a very big offensive lineman early. Again, John, I'd be with you as an automatic if the Jets did not take did not acquire Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses. It would be an automatic. There'd be no thought. It brings me back, and I've mentioned this story a couple of times, the 2020 NFL draft, the New York Jets. I loved C.D. Lamb. I loved him. I loved him. I loved him. I would want him in any scenario, but I knew the Jets had to take an offensive tackle. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So it didn't matter what I loved about Lamb. I knew what the Jets had to do. And they did take the offensive tackle. Now, obviously, Mekhi Beckton's still a free agent right now, so it hasn't worked out great. But the fact of the matter is, that's where they had to go. That was the responsible thing to do, and it was the responsible thing to do. Maybe you will argue it's a responsible thing to do once again to go back into those offensive tackle waters, which, again, we will investigate. Uh, there's no question about it. All right, I'm going to just go right to quarterback, and uh, I'm taking Sam Hartman, man. Uh, I think the Jets need a developmental quarterback. I think the benefit of these final two picks is you beat the priority free agent race. 
of as soon as and that's what this is you get to guarantee that you get the player over the bidding war which i think these are going to be sneaky important picks so uh that's where i'm going i'm going sam hartman quarterback out of notre dame i'm getting my long-term guy take a dart throw throw him in the room so sam hartman notre dame quarterback with the 256 overall pick in the seventh round you are a new york jet There we go. We got our quarterback. We got a long-term quarterback with flowing locks. We got a handsome room right there, baby. A very handsome room. And that brings us to Mr. Irrelevant, the final pick of the 2024 NFL draft and also final pick of this exercise uh, for the seven rounds. And uh, again, a lot of the love went to the offense, and that's how I would be doing it in my mind. That would be areas uh, that I'd be troubleshooting and I would be looking for personally. And now that we've taken safety, I'm looking at interior defensive line again. The other position I'm looking for is corner. Again, that is a sneaky need, depending on what the Jets are doing, Michael Carter II. Quite frankly, I just hope that they resign Michael Carter II and DJ Reed, for that matter, so we don't even have to think about this position. We got our quarterback. We could go another wide receiver. We had Roma Dunze, which was very nice. We've gotten an offensive tackle. We've gotten a guard. We've gotten that safety. Um, yeah, let me just, uh, take one more peek out, yeah, take a peek at a couple of uh, positions here, potentially wide receiver. Okay. Very nice. And then we'll get Mr. Irrelevant. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm aware I'm supposed to play the music before the pick, but, uh, Hey, this is, uh, this is the exercise. Yes, I'm aware. Yes. But, the, you know, we get the music in there, so it's uh, it's nice. Whether it's before or after, it's all the same. All right, let's see here. Um, I guess you could go running back, but I don't love the running back options. Just give me the vet running back, and we will stick and pick there. And then everyone can yell at me for this, uh, for this mock draft they may or may not agree with. I would lean towards not agree. All right, I'm just going to go. You know, I don't think... Many people are going to like this, but uh, I'm going to go with a corner here to protect ourselves in the DJ Reed, Michael Carter, the second uh, activities. Plus, I don't know what's happened with Justin Hardy. Is he coming back? I'm not sure. So uh, we'll go with uh, Jarius Monroe, the cornerback out of Tulane with the final pick in the draft. Let's go there. That will be that will be the final selection here. <laughs> Jarius Monroe, the cornerback out of Tulane, is the selection for the New York Jets, and that wraps up our draft exercise here. All right, A lot of offense, which would be the way I would run it if I was running this mock, which literally I was. So here we go. Okay, let's uh, put this mock up. Here is the full mock draft scenario. We'll also tweet it out and put it out as well. I traded up with the Atlanta Falcons in the first round, going from 10 to 8, giving up the 134th overall pick. That's a second to last pick in the fourth round, plus a third rounder in 2025 to go get Roma Dunze. Got Cooper BB with a 72nd overall pick out of uh, Kansas State. Roma Dunze, of course, out of uh, Washington. With the 111th overall pick, we got Christian Jones, the offensive tackle out of Texas. With the 185th overall pick, we went safety Omar Brown out of Nebraska. Of course, with the 256 overall pick, the penultimate pick, Sam Hartman, quarterback, Notre Dame. And finally, Jarius Monroe, quarterback out of Tulane with Mr. Irrelevant. A lot of offense, more offense than not, of course, with the wide receivers, guards, tackles, quarterbacks, all the like, and a couple of defensive uh, stuff sprinkled in there as well. That's a draft that will let you guys yell at me. This draft sucks from Jaden. Oh, well. Uh, people will be able to grade it. I will put that out on social media, and you guys will be able to grade that if you'd like. So let's talk about the good and bad that came out of this. So by going wide receiver early, you have to wait on tackle because there wasn't really tackles available at, at 72 that we don't believe in, which, like I said, Patrick Paul, I don't think is going to be there in round three. I don't think that's realistic or else this draft looks even cooler if that is potentially it. So that's the one danger that, of course, the Jets have to uh, factor in. But I will add a couple of details that obviously won't be there for people that are grading this draft. I think the Jets are adding a veteran running back for dirt cheap in a couple of weeks, months maybe. I think they are adding a veteran tackle, whether it's Donovan Smith, David Bakhtiari, what have you. That makes me feel a little bit better. But I understand having a long-term option in that room would be highly intriguing but I'm really infatuated with the receivers. But John Sauer said it earlier that uh, I could come to regret that. 
I, I uh, as uh, Connor Rogers said, you get your dessert before your vegetables. And uh, that could be the case. But boy, to have this offense scoring a million points, to have this defense where we are, some people hate this. Some people love this. That's part of the mock draft experience, a mock draft Monday to kick off the month of April. We will be having a few other draft experts. I'll be checking to see their availability. We'll get their thoughts on where the Jets stand. Some national insiders, also some other ones as well. So let's see. This is uh, Mitch Staff. You're right on YouTube. The cross your fingers, the airline stays healthy draft. That's 100% right. That is 100% right. And I would also add this, Mitch, uh, who comments on YouTube. I think the staff, not I think, the staff is super high on uh, Carter Warren. So if Carter Warren is making the leaps that they believe he is, and Max Mitchell is kind of a meh, he's fine. Maybe hopefully he gets healthier coming back uh, from the blood clots. I think that really threw him off last year. There's no question about it. But if you br- if Carter Warren makes that leap, maybe he could be your swing tackle. And I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. That would be progression. That'd be development in your room. You'd love to see that potentially uh, for Carter. But I, I don't lie. Uh, more offensive tackle help uh, potentially would have gotten up there. Um, uh, trading up for Rome was an April Fool's joke. You got me. <laughs> uh, you guys hate this. That's okay. That's all right. I still respect it. I still respect it. Uh, John says, what did the staff see that we didn't? I thought there were pops. I mean, uh, there was times where Carter Warren showed a lot of hoods to me. So I think that's something both the staff and we saw. But the things I can't speak about, obviously, are what happened inside that building. I wasn't inside the building, so I can't tell how they feel about them or not, obviously. But I can only tell on what we saw for the end of the year, and he got a lot of valued experience. I think Salah did talk about that, the annual league meeting. A lot of young players got experience they wouldn't have normally gotten outside of injury, and uh, hopefully we got some with Carter. Remember, he was injured uh, at his final year at Pitt. He got injured again with the Jets early, missed a ton of time, and then we got to see some of those pops late. You're like, man, if this guy can stay healthy, we could kind of see what other uh, opportunities are potentially there for him. So there it is. That is the mock draft scenario, and you guys can all yell at me about it. I'll also put it on the YouTube community page. Feel free to grade it, react to it. We'll throw all that out there. Also be throwing it out on Instagram and Twitter, at BoyGreen25 in both places, for our seven-round mock draft to kick off in here. I will tell you, Jaden, I love that idea. Before we get out of here, I freaking love that idea. And that may be, if you don't go with the the wide receiver thing, Jaden, I think this may be the number one scenario for me. If you can trade back to like, I don't know, um, 13, 14, I don't know where all of a sudden the Brock Bowers thing starts, but boy, if you could trade back, because I'd want to protect myself a little bit, but if you can trade back to uh, 12, 13, 14, somewhere in there, and then right ahead of the Colts at 15, who may pull the trigger, boy, if you could go to like 14, pick up a third, grab Brock Bowers, use your two thirds, launch up. To, now we're getting wild and crazy. Maybe we could try that in the future, but, and uh, I could do the draft value chart. That could be another mock we can attempt to do. I love that idea though. You get Bo- uh, Brock Bowers who who's a nasty pass catcher. Plus you get that second level offensive tackle. Hopefully by trading up as high as you can in the second round, we'll have to get the draft value chart out and play out that scenario. That could be a really fun scenario. Let me actually put that in there. I, I will put that in for a future. Let's try this. I will go Brock Bowers trade back. I'm putting this in because I love this idea. Absolutely love this idea. Trade up and uh, or trade down, excuse me. We'll trade down and then move up second round. Okay. For the offensive tackle. I love that idea. So, uh, Jaden, that's beautiful. I just put that down in my notes. That's a future scenario. And I'll make sure I do my homework ahead of time to see how far, if they trade back to, we'll call it 14. See the third we get, combine the third with the 72, see what the launch up potential is for the second. How high can we get realistically? Who's on the board? Is that pa- is that the Patrick Paul? Then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, okay, we got a dynamic pass catcher who you love in Brock Powers. Oh, wow, now we got a, a significant guy to check off the bucket list for John. And maybe you're just checking off all the bucket list items there. So, Jaden, beautiful. You should be the GM, pal. I freaking love that move. So we put that in the notes. We'll do some homework. Hopefully we can do that scenario in a later mock draft uh, coming up because that is phenomenal. 
That is phenomenal. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us here for Boy Green Daily. A lot of fun. Like I said, Dom Steele will be back next Monday. Looking forward to that. And plus, we'll have a couple of other draft analysts that will be joining us uh, this week as well. Just the timing didn't work out for today, so we will check in on that. Phil also says the Lad McConkey potential you trade back and get in there. There's a lot of possibilities if you trade back. I trade it up, and uh, all hell broke loose, baby. But that's what happens. Make sure you guys like the video. Hit subscribe down below for more Boy Green Daily here on the channel. We love you, everybody, and enjoy April. It's draft month, baby. And I will just say this before we leave. It's awesome to me that the Jets have the stacked roster that they do right now, and the draft hasn't even happened yet. So the draft is going to add some cherry on top of the pie, some whipped cream. Put that on the pie. We got some juicy, delicious pie, baby, of this Jets roster, making a run, chasing a chip, trying to win a Super Bowl. Super Bowl. So that's it. That's the plan. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you tomorrow morning for Boy Green Daily. Take care. And uh, also, one more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Okay? Please, Jets people, don't be doing the April Fool's jokes. Oh, wow, they traded for this guy. Ha, ha, ha. And it's an April Fool's joke. Come on, people. Please. Please don't do that. Don't participate in that on social media. And other people, just don't do it. I just uh, just lame April Fool. Like I'm going to be on the radio uh, later today in a couple hours. Please, people, call into the show and give a fake April Fool's joke. It's not funny. Please don't. Just a quick PSA. I digress. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you later. Take care. God bless.